Good morning everyone, this is James from the DSO Imager channel and uh, today is uh, Friday, uh, November 25th, the day after Thanksgiving here in the States. So it's also known as Black Friday where everyone is uh, out shopping, looking for deals and uh, I'm sitting at home by myself working on some data. Now I've been running on this project for a while. This is a four panel mosaic of M31 uh, that I took using the uh, ATI uh, the AT115 EDT and the uh, ZWO ASI uh, 1600 Mono. Uh, so I want to get a good uh, uh, detailed shot at this uh, 644 millimeter focal length uh, but also give M31 some spa breathing space around it. And so that's why I went with this uh, four panel arrangement. So while working through this today I thought it'd be a good idea to record my mosaic process and uh, share that with everyone. Now what you see here is uh, the red filters right? and uh, I've already done luminance and uh, I'm about to move on to green and so I'll show you guys how I'm doing it. My procedure that I'm using now is a little bit different uh, than what you've seen in my other videos covering um, mosaics and I wrote myself a little cheat sheet here and so basically it's cropping, running dynamic background extraction, then doing an image solve. Uh, I used to uh, use star alignment for the mosaics and I'm finding that this image solve, image solve and then mosaic by coordinates is definitely a, a superior way of doing this. And then I'll cover this even though I'm not having to use it uh, but I still use this uh, uh, to inspect and then joining the frames we have two different methods uh, photometric mosaic or gradient merge mosaic and uh, I've been using gradient merge mosaic it's given me better results uh, but I suspect that's because it's a galaxy with a lot of uh, empty space around it and like I mentioned uh, this video is just going to be on the mosaic process I'm not going to show you a final image or uh, go through uh, image processing at all on this. Uh, we actually have, a, uh, looks like a couple more clear nights uh, ahead and I'm wanting to get more HA data anyway. So I'm not, not ready to process this all the way, but I'm just laying the groundwork and getting the, the LRGB panels uh, created. All right, so let's get started. All right, so here we go. I've got the four panels in here now, F1 through F4. And we're just going to tr uh, do a dynamic crop on these. And all we're wanting to do really is remove stacking artifacts and uh, anything else that doesn't look, look too good. Maybe I got some really bad stars in the corner like this. Well, I'll keep this here and I'll trim this off later. Notice I've got some tilt. So the stars in that corner always look like garbage. I really need to take the time to uh, correct that. All right. All right, and rinse and repeat three times. I'll pause the video and resume once I'm finished. Okay, now that that's done, uh, next is dynamic background extraction, and I already saved the process from when I was working with the other frames, so note the tolerance value and the shadow relaxation. And for this uh, example, we're using a sample radius of 20, just because I can fit it in between the stars. And we're on subtraction. So I've read some uh, documentation by the uh, person who created the um, photometric mosaic script and he commented that uh, for DBE you always want to use subtraction because division I guess does something weird on the math side. Uh, so I'm just going to do one pass of, subscri uh, of subtraction and um, in this case I'm just going to put uh, put reference points in three corners. And uh, by the way just uh, little tip here. You get this little zoom up window and you can actually, ideally you don't want any stars. So you can move the little reference while keeping your eyes on here uh, to pick a spot that's got no stars. And then after that run 
and there background extraction and there we go uh, and the reason I'm doing dynamic background extraction is that it it's it seems to give more consistent results with all the panels because if there's a significant difference in brightness uh, with your panels it's gonna it's gonna show up so even if the seams don't show up the whole panel is gonna look um, uh, it's gonna be very noticeable because there's a different type of background even though all these tools are designed to uh, merge all that t together if uh, if the difference is enough it's still noticeable and so this is why uh, when planning your mosaics you definitely want to uh, pay attention to moon phases and light pollution domes and try to get the most consistent sky conditions for all the panels it's uh, LRGB panels are really tough when it comes to stuff like light gradients uh, narrow band not so much but the, the challenge with LRGB is is significant in that part. Alright, so I'm going to do this for the rest of them and uh, pause the video or recording and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see here I've got dynamic background extraction on all of them. The uh, next step is image solve. And so we go to script, image analysis, and um, image solver. Now the way this program works is uh, you can't load them from the workspace. You have to load files. So I did save all of these in a folder and we'll grab these now. There we go. And I didn't change anything. All the settings I kept default and I just hit OK. And it runs for a little bit. Um, I'll go ahead and pause the recording again. When it's finished, uh, you'll see a, a process complete or something like that. Okay, so that completed and you notice it's got a uh, process finished without errors. And uh, what it looks like, it puts a, a WCS in the name of the file. So these are these are all my panels that have been image solved. Okay, next step is the um, mosaic by coordinates. So again we go into script, utilities, and mosaic by coordinates. And just like last time it wants the files loaded so I'll grab my image solved files. And uh, on this one for options, I did do high quality. It takes a little bit longer to run, but you know that's what I want. And for the output, uh, it's going to give us a registered suffix there. So I'll hit OK, and then I will pause and be right back when this is finished. OK, uh, I just finished uh, the registration on that. Uh, one little thing. Don't forget to change your uh, output directory because uh, I left it on red and I went in my green folder and I was like, where is it? And I, oh, it's in the red folder. I didn't change that. Okay, so next uh, I have on the list is the trim mosaic tile. And this should not be necessary for me, uh, but I'll show the process anyway. So the uh, mosaic by coordinates gives you four of these. Right, so now you can see each piece where it is. And if you still have some artifacts or things in this area that need to get trimmed out that you didn't do before, uh, the, um, the trim mosaic tile script would be, would be the way to do it. Now, because I cropped these images uh, at the very beginning, you know, all these edges look clean. So it's unnecessary for for me. But uh, if you decide you have to go back and shave something off instead of having to start the whole process over again, uh, you can just use this tool. And there it is. It's a script mosaic, trim mosaic tile. And the way this works is that these are values of pixels. So if you want to shave 10 pixels off, you can shave 10 pixels off on all sides. And it has a real-time preview. And if you check this, it opens it up. And it can give you an idea. Now, you can't slide here, but 
the sliders are over here, scroll X and scroll Y. And so you can kind of inspect all the corners. And uh, let's say you want to do 20, uh, 20 pixels on the right. So you uncheck real time preview, you go to right, you plug in 20, you hit run, and then it will make the change. I'm not going to do it here because I don't want to trim any data here, but um, it'll make the change. And then you can just go to each one and do that. So pretty nifty tool. Uh, you do have to bring them into uh, the workspace to use it though. And if you make any changes, then you're going to have to save them again uh, on your system. Uh, but anyway, uh, we don't need to worry about it because uh, my corners look pretty good there, or my edges look pretty good. So the uh, final step is to join the frames. And like I mentioned earlier, you have a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, you can use the photometric mosaic. Uh, so that's under script mosaic and uh, photometric mosaic. And I mean, it looks it looks pretty complicated here, but it's it's not really. Uh, and the documentation, yeah, John Murphy did a great job uh, documenting everything. And um, yeah, I wonder if this works better with uh, RGB data. Like I said, I I, I didn't save the picture, but um, it didn't quite do as good a job of merging the different panels uh, as. Um, as gradient merge mosaic for me. Now, um, it, it may just be my data set. The other thing is he's constantly working on this and there's new updates. I know um, there's a newer version than, than what's already in uh, PixInsight. So I would say for anyone that's doing this to try it both ways and see which way works um, better and then <laughs> go with that one. And just remember each picture is an individual. So just because one way work better on your current project doesn't mean it might be the other way around in the future. All right, so anyway, for this, I'm going to use gradient merge mosaic. So there it is, gradient merge mosaic. Uh, we'll clear that, and we'll add our files from green, and we want these registered ones. And kind of the cool thing about gradient merge mosaic is that you can just pile them all in there and run it. These are the values that I've been using and boom. And so this will take a little bit. It actually doesn't take that long to run. Maybe I won't pause this and we'll just let it go. Uh, I'm running a kind of a mid-range PC. It's a, a AMD 3700, so eight cores and um, 32 gigs of RAM. Not a lot. I've been thinking about adding some more RAM to the system but should be almost done and there it is okay and how'd it come out yeah I think that's pretty good all right, I'm not seeing any panel lines. Maybe a little bit of smoothness there, but I don't think that's anything to worry about. Yeah, that looks really good there. It's not perfect. We got this over here. So what causes this sort of thing is it's it's where the seams are, where the overlap takes place, and it sometimes does some weird things to the stars here. You can tweak this value. Uh, you can tweak some values that can maybe improve or worsen this. Usually, you just want to play with the feather radius so that the um, the overlap occurs in a different spot. The problem you run into though is in an area that's got a lot of stars that that can sometimes be difficult. Uh, when I did run this on the um, on the photometric mosaic tool I did not get any of these so this I think is an artifact of running gradient merge mosaic. Uh, 
but I don't think it's a problem now because I mean this this image is still linear and um, I can uh, when I combine everything up I'll remove the stars as usual so I can work on the stars separately and then I could just use clone stamp to take care of the residual artifacts there so that's probably what I'll do uh, but anyway uh, there it is there's uh, how that uh, uh, mosaic workflow that I'm currently using works out so please stay tuned the uh, the final image hopefully will be out in a week or so uh, hopefully I get some a little bit more clear clear nights and uh, and then I'll go through the whole workflow but I won't have to cover the mosaic process because we did it just now so if anyone has any questions or comments please feel free to drop them in there uh, and if you do things differently for your mosaics, let me know. I'd be curious to hear how it works for you. All right. With that, have a good afternoon and clear skies.